a.m. It didn't finish until almost 10 past 8, and consequently there were enormous traffic jams in cities all around Australia, because no one could tear themselves away from what was the most gripping television event of the Games. This map of the marathon course shows roughly where it went. It started on the south bank of the Brisbane River, crossed over the river and through the city, over some undulating land, and right down through the valley out to Eagle Farm, where the Brisbane airport is. It's an out and back course, roughly 13 miles each way, or 42.2 kilometres overall. It comes back through the city again and winds back towards us in the bottom of the picture where the very scenic St Lucia University of Queensland is situated. This is the toughest part of the course with lots of hills. They then go back along Coronation Drive to the original start position, finishing some two hours, ten minutes later. A very hot and tough course, but Rob De Castella quite confident he can take this one out. For this event, Cardiff Games Marathon Champion of 1958, Dave Power, joins our commentators Tim Lane and Herb Elliott. Watch is poised. And away they go. 25 seconds after 6 o'clock. 1982 Brisbane Commonwealth Games Marathon is underway. Australian hopes, primarily with Robert D. Costello, also with Laurie Whitty and Rob Wallace. And there he is, the big man, number 28, in the middle of the pack. The pack which, as the next uh, two hours unfolds, will gradually diminish. Well, of course. Tremendous applause too. Streets lined as uh, at a very early hour this morning. Quite a freakish situation at five o'clock, driving through the streets, people everywhere. Yes, it's strange to see a crowd like this in a marathon in Australia. Overseas, of course, you know, the marathons are, are number one and people line the route along the whole way. And, uh, but this, you know, this uh, marathon has certainly grabbed the, uh, um, the, uh, the attention of uh, every Australian, I think, uh, Nearly every Australian will be glued to their TV sets today. James Mawu of Kenya up on the pace, but it's interesting to see the two Tanzanians running virtually shoulder to shoulder like teammates, and the Kenyan away by himself. I don't know whether viewers happen to notice uh, when we had a shot of the runners going across the bridge, the absolute stillness of the Brisbane River as well as a sheet of glass. So Perfect conditions, really no wind, either for or against the runners at the moment. They couldn't really have asked for a better day. In the early stages of the event, runners, you can see the field breaking up, just running along lightly. And Kenyan they runner. say that they hardly even feel the first uh, 10 miles or so, 16 kilometres. They've been training so hard, then they ease off a little bit in the last couple of weeks, they carbohydrate load will go into their own dietary routine prior to the event and put down uh, the first third of the journey at least uh, virtually feeling no strain at all. But later on, well, it's a different story. And there's a breakaway from the two Tanzanians and the Kenyan, just opening up that gap a little bit very early on. Obviously, marathons are uh, kept on flat terrain where possible. That's right. I think it would have been murder to run it any, anywhere else, uh, particularly around that QE2 stadium where it's so hilly and uh, probably running on the freeway. The atmosphere would be right against the runners and, uh, and of course, the hills wouldn't do them any good. Interesting to see this Kenyan boy, um, 420 Mawayu. Uh, he's, uh, he's fastest time to my, uh, my record is 228, which is not real fast marathon, but he's, uh, he's staying in there with them. And, of course, uh, Shahenga, uh, Four years ago, hadn't had fast times either, and uh, no one would have expected him to uh, come through like he did. So maybe here's another uh, dark horse from the Fells Valley. Just got a shot there of the, of the cars all banked up, of course. Uh, Six o'clock bumper to bumper traffic curve on the Story Bridge. <laughs> the roads all sort of closed off uh, for the marathon. There'll be a lot of disruption of traffic in Brisbane today, which I'm sure the people of Brisbane will wear well lose them here as they go through the Ivory Street Tunnel, 8 minutes 45, 6 down in the marathon. Probably irrelevant to mention at the moment, I remember seeing a relay in America once where guys ran into a tunnel, about eight of them, only one came out the other end. The two Tanzanians <laughs> have kicked away. <laughs> Three kilometres down in nine minutes. And Shahanga and Akanga. 
left bar wound behind slightly. But and the sec widen the gap on the main pack as they yeah. come out of that tunnel. That main pack is, not, uh, that main pack is not far behind them, Tim. And B. Gustavus is also, he's sitting in there and he looks very comfortable at this stage. I don't think he's going to do anything rash. Well, with 5k down, let's give you a little update. Two Tanzanians, Ikanga on the left, Shahanga on the right, behind that policeman. Kenyan, Mawu, who was dropped off, but uh, starting to peg them back. He's only five metres or so behind the two Tanzanians now. A little bit more. And then back to the main bunch, which includes the Australian, the favourite. Robert De Costello, there he is, there's Deke, number 28. Kevin Ryan, the New Zealander in the black. On their way back, 12 kilometres down. Twelve point five and thirty-eight minutes. Yeah. At the Eagle Farm turnaround. Akanga, Shahanga, Ryan, De Costella, two Scots also up there, Graham Lang and John Graham, and Fijian Shiri Shan, the other runner in the main bunch. They're the top seven in the Commonwealth Games Marathon for 1982 after about uh, 38 minutes of running. Just looking at the rest of the field as they come through. Well, long way now behind the leading bunch. We're approaching the hour mark, 58 minutes and 15 seconds down now. And just an update, the two Tanzanians have dominated the race in its first hour. Gidimus Shahanga closer to the camera, Juma Akanga on the far side, and they have a gap, or have opened a gap of something like a couple of hundred metres over a pack of five runners, which includes Robert De Costello of Australia, Graham Lang of Scotland, John Graham of Scotland, Kevin Ryan of New Zealand, and Marios Cassianides of Cyprus. There they are, coming back into the city. Well, re they must be reaching that uh, very close to Ann Street in this, uh, from memory, and I've been over this course myself, there's quite a bit of a pinch there and steep uphill climbs and one of the first of the, the really uh, hills that are in the, uh, on the course. Shot of the city of Brisbane, Brisbane River. Beautiful, as you say, uh, Herb, there's not a ripple on that water. Conditions are really great. No uh, strong winds to contend with. Well, they're in the business end of the race now. This is where it all starts to happen. Perhaps in another five or six miles, where the pressure is really on. What a sight. Through the tunnel. Lovely loneliness to have this one, <laughs> that far in front of the field. Let's update. 66 and a half minutes down in the marathon. Two Tanzanians, Juma and Kanga in front. Gidimus Shahanga, the winner in 1978. Gold medalist in the 10,000 metres here in Brisbane. We're at the 22 kilometre mark. They've led the field from the start. And as you can see, it's daylight second. And this really is the critical phase of the race. As they hit the hills, we're so far into the event now, virtually two thirds of the way there. 85 minutes almost have elapsed. And in the next half hour or so, this marathon might be run and lost. And a kangaroo is at 31 kilometres. 32 kilometres is 20 miles. So well, he's in that zone now. Slightly over 10k to go. And I think having dropped his teammate, uh, suddenly being there alone uh, would make him think more of himself and be more aware of, uh, of uh, his own tiredness and aware of his own condition. Strangely enough, having another runner alongside you does relieve that thinking about him, awareness of your own difficulties. De Costello. He's thrown down the gauntlet in his own mind. He's made up his mind that he has to move out by himself. He's broken away from the rest of the marathon field that stuck with him for more than halfway through the race. And there they are, the leader, the man who wants to lead. De Castell looks quite strong there, Herb, and uh, uh, is he uh, making a valiant effort to uh, catch the leader? And uh, if he does, of course, if, uh, if he passes Shahanga, who has dropped back, that will give him uh, a certain amount of inspiration and uh, uh, it would probably make him realise that these boys are tiring. They're not, uh, um, you know, superhuman after all. And he's, uh, he's doing, he's running towards uh, his plan. Pat Percy said he'd make his uh, run, you know, about uh, five miles to go. And, uh, well, they're getting down to that stage now. And I think the crowd will really rally to De Costello if they can sense that the gap might be starting to close. And what a situation we could have here with 
a little over 20 minutes of running left and De Costello, it seems, starting to close the gap between Akanga, Shahanga and himself. Here comes the hill. This is the big one. Well, you can't say that's slowing him down too much. He's well, attacking it. But he this, really is attacking the hill. That's isn't? right. It's quite a long one too, you know. That's uh, the way out, way out the university. It was There's Deke in the picture. Yes, he's that not that far not behind. Right. Not far behind. Off. Wouldn't it be, would be wonderful, wouldn't he, if he got up there with them? With the few miles to go. He's, what, what would you say that was? A couple hundred yards, I suppose. He really has closed the gap, hasn't he? There's the situation. You can just see them in the main body of the screen. First, second and third. And De Costello has almost caught Shahanga. And that must give him a tremendous surge. A lot of heart. It'll, it'll, sort of, uh, it'll help him a lot, you know. He's, he's running with him now. He's, he's past him. He's past him. Here comes Deke. Oh, is he going? Yes, can he do it? Yes. <coughs> They've got about two miles to go. They've put down 157, 46, 47, 48. So they'll be running now for something like uh, another 10 minutes, a little bit more. And De Costello seems to have a Kanga covered in the marathon. He's come from... 500 metres behind at one okay. stage and now trails by only 15 or 20 metres and the crowd sensing an Australian victory here really urging him on and look at him the big I man I think he's got him I think he's got him what will I can do when uh, De Costello comes on his shoulder will he drop or will he uh, will he carry on this is the first time we've seen the two of them this place in a long time so that's his stuff Dick. yeah looks, that's looking, stuff. looking good that's too situation. isn't he looking strong remember that he's tired too he's he looked in, around he's seen him distance. Now Kanga's seen De Costello on his shoulder, so uh, that must be a great pressure, a lot of pressure. And they're right on the world record schedule. If they do the last two miles in five minutes, it's around 2.8. Oh. Well, Deke showing that he's no one race wonder. This is another superlative performance. But Akanga, no doubt, knowing that De Costello's there now, trying to summon another effort to go with the Australian in the last two mile drive to the line. But the big man looks strong, he looks good. Looks good and a slight smile on his face too and he knows that uh, he's in there. Look at him now, yes, he's going, he's now, going. What's going to happen here? Are they going to run together or is Dick's going to have a rest? I think he'll try and go straight past Marty and establish a supremacy if he possibly can. He's sort of nestling in there behind him at the moment. Kanga must be answering the challenge. Here he goes, or is he? Oh, look, yes, he yeah, is. yeah, he's Deke going, yeah. Front. De Costello hits the front in the last two miles. Come on, Dick. Come on, Dick. What a performance. What a fantastic performance by the Australian whose spirits must have been, uh, well, in, in doubt at one stage when he was so far behind. But now a Kanga raising oh, Kanga. Oh, it's, he's yeah, going to say, I'm not going to lose this lead in a hurry. No. Look at the difference in size, too. He's throwing down the challenge. He's throwing down the challenge. As Deke Chris would have had to uh, raise a, 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 a great run to make up that gap as he, as he sort of uh, used up all his strength. I mean, it would have taken a lot of doing. He was really running fast, bridging the gap. But uh, can he sustain it? You know, maybe he's caught them and, uh, and uh, that's it, you know. Well, the Kangas opened up a gap. They've gone <laughs> through 39 kilometres. They've got round about three to go. And, and Deke Estella's coming again. Obviously a real battle of the minds now with both trying to establish that mental supremacy over the other and has there ever been a marathon like this? This could be the greatest finish in a marathon in history. They are both very, very tired, very, very exhausted. They have to have this sort of a battle and sprint to the finish in a marathon like this. It's a challenge that is an incredible challenge. I think, I think they're both trying to sort of get some sort of a break because this is where you've got to get a gap, otherwise it's a sprint home and... And, you know, that could mean anything. Kanga's back in front. He's run past Deke Estella and look at him. What a race. What a race. The gauntlet thrown down to Deke. He's got to try and hang in there. We've gone over the two-hour mark. We're coming up to two hours and one minute right now. So they've got about uh, seven or eight minutes to run. That's about a mile and a half. It's just a what? drive to the line now and a great battle of the bodies and wheels. And Deke Estella back in front. Pace, uh, the, the lead's changing, chopping and changing, and uh, who's going to just get that break that's going to make the difference? Well, at Boston in March this year, we saw, we didn't see, but we heard about Salazar and Beardsley fighting it out, and eventually Salazar in a sprint to the line, one by two seconds. De Costello opening a bit of a gap, but Akanga will probably come back. 
the support for Deke Estella could be the difference here. The crowd urging him on. This is a bigger break. This is the best break that's been made since they started to, to uh, duel it out. And uh, this is a winning break. Well, is yes, he the greatest is. marathon runner in the world? <laughs> he's shown today that, uh, as I said, he's no race, one race wonder. He really is a, an absolute marvel. This has been a mighty performance by Deke Estella. The question is now, can you break the world record as well? Well, he's only got to swing around here now, <clears throat> and round to his left, and then turn around and go down Stanley Street to the finishing line. Two hours so five, once he coming turns... up to two hours five, 20, so there's every chance that this could be the fastest marathon ever run. And he's not wearing a watch. Over a, a difficult course, it's not, uh, yeah. it is not a fast course. If he breaks he the world time in this event, well then he's established himself as without any doubt at all as the most superior marathon runner in the world. Well, the Commonwealth Games is something that I think all Australian people, you know, athletes especially, have been looking up and striving to, to run in ever since you know, they, they started the sport, or ever since they started following the sport. And that's what the Commonwealth Games means to me. It's something that I've really wanted to do ever since I was 10 or 11 years old. Face contorted, but De Costello knows that he's got the marathon won. 208, uh, 13, he's got a break. We're up to 208 now. 13 seconds. Oh, Deeks. If he doesn't break it, he's not going to be far away. And I don't think he'll really mind all that much because this has just been an outstanding performance. The time has just elapsed. 208, 16, 17, crowd. 18. Come on, Rob. With his time at Fukuoka. Come on, Robbie. Come on, Robbie. Yes, the world record doesn't matter. We've just got to get a nice, nice on top of the cake for you. Look at that crowd, Look at him go. Yes. There he comes, down to the finish. It's only a few metres away now. Right. Just a hundred metres or so. He's won it, yes. 42 kilometre sign up on the electronic uh, timer and distance marker. And De Costello in the last hundred metres or so of the marathon. There's the gap this between first and second. Yeah. And is this man the greatest marathon runner in the world? Perhaps we'll find out in the next year or so when he meets the great Cuban-born American Alberto Salazar. But De Costello has shown us all today that if he's not the best, He's mighty at the same time. This has been a performance to remember for all time. Look the at the crowd speed. cheering him on. Come on, De Costello. They're cheering and he's running. He's responding. Look at it. Yes, well done, he's won Dick. it. Go, Dick. Yes, he's won it. What a great oh, he's effort. Finished. What Wonderful a great effort. Race. He's done about 2.09.16. Just about a minute slower than uh, his time at Fukuoka. What a great performance. Robert De Costello, marathon gold medalist. The silver going to Juma Akenga of Tanzania. But the race belongs to De Costello. Well, didn't that still get you? What a fantastic race. And of course, Deke went on to win the World Marathon Championship in Helsinki.